Guess what? I Get Food is back on the go. This time, we're gonna be dropping in on London, England. It's time to get food. So some of you might have heard that London isn't exactly the place for a foodie. Bad food, worse weather, Mary and Poppins, London. Well, you know what I say to that? Absolute rubbish. This most definitely is a great city for some tasty eats. So if you're in search of a proper meal, then a proper meal is what you're gonna find because I Get Food is here to sort you out. Come along and join me because in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my top five must try foods if you find yourself in the city of London. Rise and shine, sunshine, because we've got a quick hop on the tube to London's East End. That's where we're going to kick things off with a full English breakfast. Here we go. Brilliant. So here we go. Sometimes called a fry up, it's got all of your good stuff. You've got your sausage, your toast, eggs, bacon, mushrooms. We've got some hash browns here, of course, can't be a full English breakfast without some beans and tomato and of course a bit more of a controversial item for some people but you've got that black sausage over there and I also added you know with their recommendation something called bubble and squeak and I can't wait to tell you guys a little bit more about that why don't we start with some of the mushrooms mm. oh yeah and this is their bacon Oh. Mm. So while there are a lot of fantastic spots here in London to get a full English breakfast, I'm here today at Polici's, an absolute institution here in London. This is one of the spots I absolutely recommend if you're looking to throw down on a fry up. One of the things that I love about this spot is they do the fried toast. <laughs> and look at that, you got that egg on there. Gotta have some of those beans too, right? Mm. I hear that the beans sometimes can be a little bit on the sweet side, but here at Polici's, they got it just the way I like it, not too sweet at all. And of course, I'm sure you've heard of the famous beans and toast, right? So I'm gonna put some of the beans right there on the toast. I'm not sure if that's traditional in the way that they always have it here, but that's how I'm about to throw down. All right, this item here, this is the famous black pudding. And as I mentioned, if you've never had it before, some people might find it a little bit on the controversial side. Mm -hmm. That's some robust flavor there. So black pudding is not, you know, what we North Americans think about, you know, as pudding. So what it is, is a blood sausage. Mm. Now here, what we have here is what they call bubble and squeak. Mm. So if you've heard of a Sunday roast, what it basically is, is when you take over some of the leftover bits, you got a bit of the mashed potato, some onions, a bit of seasoning in there, you know, whatever else, you know, you've got from the previous night's meal, you sort of just mash it up, ball it up, and then fry it. So how they came up with the name Bubble and Squeak is the sound that these sort of mashed potato patties make as they're frying up on the cooktop. Mm. While it's not something you're gonna have every day, it's definitely great for a treat. It's also the perfect hangover food. Find yourself suffering from last night's pub crawl? All these fried meats and everything else you're gonna find on this plate is just what you need to soak up all of the previous night's bad choices and crushing regrets. So no surprise, we're here in London, we're doing fish and chips. A true East Ender, Pop Newland's journey with fish and chips runs as deep as the country's obsession with this guilty pleasure. 
As a young lad, Pop was in the chippy business as early as age 11. And today, his shop Poppies, as it has for over half a century, remains as the go-to spot, with its eclectic decor and lip-smacking flavor for this iconic dish. I mean, think about it. If you come to London and you didn't have fish and chips, I mean, did you, did you really come to London? So have a look, you guys, my fish and chips just arrived. So I opted to go with the regular size haddock because I was told that the haddock ends up being a little bit crispier. I can't get over just how large a piece of fish this is. What a great value. And here you go. This is their classic tartar sauce. Mm. <laughs> there it is. Fish and chips. It's so crispy and light on the outside. Yeah, this is the thing to get when you're here. All right, now, most of us North Americans, we're usually doing the ketchup more often than not on our fries. But here, you gotta do it with the malt vinegar. Time for some chicken. Great potato flavor, game, nice and crispy. So while fish and chips is definitely ubiquitous throughout London and the UK, I'm here at Poppy's because they're one of the best. I would definitely recommend it. If you're here in London, give Poppy's a try. But if you can't make it to Poppy's, hey, any spot is great. Just make sure you're going to a proper fish and chip spot. Your local pub will have it, but I think the best way to experience it is at a spot that specializes in fish and chips. While Brick Lane has undergone change in recent years, it is still home for many South Asian restaurants. And as they have for decades, they continue to serve up rich and flavorful curry to the delight of the many patrons who continue to flock to this neighborhood even today. So you have these nice, huge, marinated cubes of chicken. It's just nice and smoky from the grilling. I can smell the aroma coming off the sauce. All right, let's try some of that curry first. Mm. There's a hit of that sweetness from the tomato. The cream is thick and rich, but chicken tikka masala, what it's about is those earthy, spicy flavors. All right, let's get into that chicken now. Mm. As I mentioned, the chicken cubes of this juicy, tender chicken meat and the smokiness from the grilling really comes through and works so well with that rich, thick, sweet and spiciness of the curry. I had to get something to go with my chicken tikka masala, so I decided to add some garlic naan. Dip that into the curry. The garlic naan, bursting with garlic flavor, it's a little crispy on the edge. Perfect vehicle to soak up all the rich and robust flavors from that curry. So the age-old debate, what is in fact the origins of chicken tikka masala? Is it a British dish? So a quick Google search will give you a few hits that would indicate that this dish was first made in London from Bangladeshi immigrants. So chicken tikka masala, in terms of the name chicken tikka masala as a dish, yeah, it was invented here in the UK 
but make no mistake, it definitely has South Asian roots. But given its popularity here in London and in the UK, it's pretty clear that they've claimed it as their unofficial national dish. So do we call it a South Asian dish or do you call it an English dish? Well, call it whatever you want. I just know that I'm calling it delicious and something you have to try when you're here in London. So the next item on our list is not so much a specific dish, rather it's a location. I'm here at London's famous Borough Market. Rather than one specific thing to eat, I think the best thing to do is to come here, walk around, and sample a bunch of different things. Maybe do your own DIY food crawl. With the history going back as far as a thousand years, Borough Market is a must visit for any food lover. Here, you'll certainly find an abundance of fresh, sustainable produce, and of course, artisan food stalls, stocked to the brim with so many delicious treats. So it looks like I found a spot to get my food journey started. The ginger pig is absolutely known for their sausage rolls, but I decided I wanted to try a scotch egg for the first time. All right, so you can see that there's that boiled egg in there and encased around there is all that sausage meat. The market is not just a tourist spot. It also serves as a community hub and is home to many international foods as well. How about some Argentinian empanadas? Or maybe some French eclairs? Or maybe you're ready to experience another London tradition. That is queuing up. Do you think maybe this Spanish paella spot's popular with the crowd? In the end though, we opted for some spelt mushroom risotto. You know what? It was absolutely delish, and under 10 quid no less. So much good food, but don't forget the bevies. I got myself this refreshing juice. Feeling a little bit cheeky, are we? Looks like Mrs. I Get Food prefers some Prosecco. And why not? Got room for a little more, and I think I found what I want. Of course, maybe you fancy a meat pie. Yeah. Nothing gets more British than one of these, right? Look at that. Nice buttery crust, and in there, you've got the beef. Oh, this is gonna be absolutely awesome, you guys. You've got all that beef, all that gravy. Oh man, and that buttery crust. Oh, the pop. <laughs> Another awesome thing that you can have here when you're at Borough Market. Last but not least, we're back on Brick Lane to try a sandwich with Jewish roots that, in my opinion, is an absolute cannot miss. A lot of the spots that we shot you know, for this video are in this east end of London. I, mean, I just think this is a fantastic spot. I mean, most of the foods that we featured in this video, you can pretty much get anywhere in London, but for me, this is the spot. And when it comes to this, salt beef sandwich there's two amazing locations here i went to beigel bake and it's the one that's really famous that ones that you hear of there's uh the beigel shop just a couple of stops down they're both phenomenal i would say you know either one is great uh whichever one has a shorter lineup just pick that one and you'll get your hands on a beautiful salt beef bagel oh Mm, mm, mm. 
your boiler, I think if you I can see some water dripping. The beef is nice and salty. Oh. <laughs> that mustard and that pickle, the absolute perfect accompaniment. Cut through all that salt. And then that classic Jewish Beigel. The other thing that's super awesome about Beigel Bake is they're open 24 hours. We came during the day just because it's better to shoot in the light, but you haven't lived until you find yourself here in the wee hours of the morning wiping mustard and pickle juice from your face. <laughs> so there it is. That's a top five list, isn't it? <laughs> As always, many thanks to you guys for watching the video. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, then please help me out. Give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more adventures like this, then make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Okay, you guys, that's a wrap for me here from London. But no worries. There are more great food adventures to come. I'll see you all next time when I get food.